Folks, I'm going to start off. I've got Mbali that phoned from Pretoria, and Mbali's question is a question on limits. It's a beautiful question. She says she has a little bit of a problem to get ahead with this question. Mbali, welcome. Hello. How are you doing, my dear? I'm fine, thanks. And yourself? Not bad, thank you. Mbali, your question handles limits. I'm going to put it on the screen. The limit when h approaches zero of x plus h to the power of negative 1 minus x to the power of minus 1 over h. Yes. Okay. Now, Mbali, what is interesting about this question is those powers that are negative. Yes. What does a negative power tell you? Um, I think the um, x over the x plus h is supposed to be a fraction now, isn't it? It's supposed to be a? Fraction. Say it again. A fraction. Exactly. Exactly. I wanted you to say it twice so everybody hears it. Okay. A negative power yes. gen generates a fraction. Yes. Okay. Now, Mbali, let's see if you can answer this question. Okay. If I have a power that is a fraction, what does that generate? Um, I'm not too sure about that. Okay, look on the screen here. Yes. You were 100% correct. You told me negative powers generate fractions. Yes. Wonderful. The power was negative, so the outcome is a fraction. Now, if I have a power that is a fraction, x to the power of a half, what, yes. what does that power generate? It generates a square root or a type of root. Yes. Okay, so if the power was x to the power 3 over 5, then I have the fifth root of x to the power 3. Oh, okay. Okay, now that's important to remember. Yes. Because your questions, when we ask you to differentiate using the rules of calculus, you are going to use these two rules extensively. So you're going to use negative powers, make them fractions, or make the, the fraction back to a negative power. So you're going to turn the rule upside down. You're going to reverse that rule. And if we put the number underneath a root for you, then you have to express that root as a power before you can differentiate. Have you got that? Yes, I got that. Okay, Mbali, don't forget it because that is going to determine your success <laughs> when you okay. differentiate. All right, then. Okay, now this looks very close. It looks like it's, it's got to do with the first principles questions. Do you agree? Yes. Okay, so let's bring the fraction in. Let me just get my pen back. There we go. We go to the limit. This is nothing other than the limit. And I'm doing what you suggested. I'm writing these as beautiful fractions. Okay, Mbali, you've, you're okay so far? Yes, I understand. Okay, now I'm going to teach you a shortcut. Okay. Okay, this is what I refer to and what all mathematicians refer to as a complex fraction. Yes. Okay, I'm going to take you to another screen. I'm going to show you why it works. If I have numbers a half minus a third, and yes. I've got two thirds plus, let's say, a half at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Now, you usually would go and you would add the top two and add the bottom two and multiply by the reciprocal. You agree? Yes. Okay, there's a shortcut way. Okay. If I look at this whole sum that I see here, and I look at every denominator, in other words, the two, the three, the two, and the three. Yes. And for all four of those numbers, I find an LCD. What will that LCD be? Six. Exactly. So I say I multiply the top with a six and the bottom with a six, and the fraction is gone. Yes. Okay, so let's see how it works. Six times a half is three. Six times a third is minus two. Divided by six times two is 12. Divided by three is four. And six times a half is three. And voila, the fraction has gone in one step. Uh, yeah. Can you see that? Yes. Okay, now let's go back to your question. Look at your denominators. There's a denominator at the top of x plus h. Yes. And an x, and remember the bottom, the h in the bottom is like h over one. You agree? Okay, yeah. Okay, so what's the LCD of those three numbers? Um, 
of x plus h of x and of 1, what will you say is the LCD? h multiplied by x plus h. x multiplied by x plus h. Well done. So I take this whole fraction and I multiply the top with x multiplied by x plus h. Yes. And the bottom with x times x plus h. You happy? Yes. Okay, now if I multiply the first two together, can you see the x plus h is going to go? Yes. Okay, so let's do that step by step. There's enough space on the screen. So I have the limit. When h approaches 0, I'll talk about this just now. In that product, the two cancel and I've got an x minus what cancels in that product? X. Exactly. The x says goodbye and I have x plus h. Now, Mbali, at the bottom, do not multiply anything out in your denominator. Oh, okay. Okay, and I'm going to show you why now. If I keep h multiplied by x multiplied by the bracket x plus h in the bottom. Yes. Okay, now please remember in these type of questions, Mbali, not your notation is very important. So you haven't taken the limit yet, so you keep the limit and you keep on bringing it down until you take the limit. Yes. Are you happy? Yes. Okay, so this is the limit when h approaches 0. x minus x is nothing, and I'm left with a minus h at the top and a h at the bottom. h times x times x plus h. Can you see why I didn't multiply this out now? Yes. What's going to happen? Um, it's going to be undefined. Uh, whoop, look again. Look again. Yes. Your h is going to become zero. You, I agree fully with you there. Yes. But can you see that I've got a h factor at the bottom and an h factor at the top? Oh, okay. So those two I can just Cancel remove. Out. Exactly, okay. because they're nothing other than one. Are you happy with that? Yes. Okay, now my h can become naught. If you, I did what you did, and I'm glad you said that, so I'm going to go back one step, Mbali, and just talk about what you said now. Yes. If you went at this point and you put the H equal to naught, you're going to get naught at the top, and naught times whatever at the bottom is going to give you naught over naught. Do you yes. agree? Now, if you get that, Mbali, that's not an answer. That's an indeterminate in mathematics. Yes. Okay. That just tells you what the form of the limit looks like. It does not give you the answer. Naught over naught, folks at home, is not one. And infinity over infinity is not one. Okay, Mbali, yes. got that? Yes, thank you. So, so what this thing shows you, my dear, is the form of the limit. The form of the limit. It is not the answer. Now I remove the part that gives me the naught over naught. So it's in fact, I'm doing that. I'm, it's disappearing. It's gone now. Can you see? Yes. Okay, and I'll be left with the limit when h approaches 0 of, don't forget about the negative, so it's minus 1 over x times x plus h. There's the h that becomes naught. Now it can become 0. And finally, when I take the limit, now I drop the limit. Yes. And it's minus 1 over x multiplied by x, and that's minus 1 over x squared. And Bali, does that make sense? Yes. Okay, remember, if you get a complex fraction in these type of questions, and I can guarantee you, you will get one at the end of the year, and it will most probably be a first principles question. Oh, okay. Remember to multiply with that global LCD that I spoke about today. Yes. Okay, it gets rid of the fraction in one go. It's gone. You just multiply and the fraction is gone. Yes. And then your notation, remember, bring the limit, keep on bringing that limit down until you substitute the H with naught and it's gone. You've answered your question. Are you happy with that? Very happy. Mbali, thank you so much for phoning and please don't hesitate to phone us again. Okay, thank okay. you. Bye. Thanks, eh? Bye bye. Folks at home, just to remind you about our new product, our Maths 911 book, beautiful book, and it costs 50 rand, it's for grade 11 and for grade 12 learners. So grade 11s, you can phone us as well. Phone, phone the Maths Call Center, 08600 62847, and a copy of this will be on its way to you after you've deposited your 50 rand in the account that they'll give you.
Yeah. <laughs>